kill them all!
not an Then how do I stop? Oh, oh, oh. Wait, 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 wait. That's it? Johnson, I'm on it. Hang tight, ma'am. Not until that brute is dead. Charging. 
All systems are performing well and an operation is You're telling me you can't stop the sequence. I know the case on this plan. Interrupting the wave generating process will severely damage this installation. Give me a direct answer. I, I am The reclaimer can do what it does. Generation phase complete. The installation is ready to fire. Starting Come on, Arbiter! Kick that guy's oh. ass! And may I say, Reclaimers, it has been a pleasure to serve you both.
Come on, man. That. Mm -mm. Oh, come on. So I did this boss battle by itself. It's so infuriating. And it, it doesn't really seem like there's a way to speed it up. You just kind of have to wait for him to be vulnerable, be in the right spot, and hit him. And all, and not get hit by his hammer either. Easy, right? Charging sequence initiated. Primary generators coming online. 
Guards will shut them down. Then how do I stop it? We'll take some time to go Quit stalling. That's it. Johnson, I'm on it. Hang tight, ma'am. Not until that brute is dead. Generation base complete. The installation is ready to fire. Starting final countdown. Come on, Arbiter. Kick that guy's ass. And may I say, Reclaimers, it has been a pleasure to serve you both. Goodbye. No.
telling me you can't stop the sequence. Can you please understand? Interrupting the wave generation process will severely damage the system. Give me a direct answer. I am but a monitor. The reclaimer can do what it likes.
man. Oh my gosh. 30. Wow. I swear, if it's not one, it's the other. This is just... This is where having a co-op buddy would be really nice. Oh, 
them down. Then how do I stop it? Well, it will take some time to get the proper procedures. Quit stalling. Under more controlled circumstances, I would suggest the reclaimers simply remove the index. That's it? Johnson, I'm on it. Hang tight, ma'am. Not until that brute is dead. See. No. Secondary generators charging. All systems are performing well within operational parameters. You're telling me you can't stop the sequence. Reclaimer, please understand. This is the wave generation process. This is kind of ridiculous. Like he's got a team plus himself. I got. I got leads that are. Functional morons at best.
given how much I've given how much I've failed, he may be right. Johnson almost just shot me. It's like, bro, I know you're frustrated, but you also haven't died like 25 times. Mmm, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Start all over again, sure. Definitely. This is just, this is kind of the part of the game that just ticks me off. Like, there's no. Oh, 
perfect tactic. Yeah, yes, you let your allies wear him down and then you go for the shots, but you also have to be in the perfect position while he's gunning for you 24-7. You have to be in the perfect position each time. Shut them down. Then how do I stop it? Well, we'll have some time to go over the other procedures. Quit going. Under more controls. I would suggest that we just set the rules. That's it? Johnson, I'm on it. Hang tight, ma'am. Not until that brood is dead. <laughs> oh, finally I catch a break. And not a grenade. Catching breaks instead of grenades. How about that? Definitely. Couldn't see it on the screen? That seems really fair.
working. All systems are performing well within operation parameters. You're telling me you can't stop the thing. Yeah. Oh my good This is this is just stupid. This is just flat out stupid. This is just flat out stupid, like what anyways. Like this is yeah, this is more about finishing than enjoyment. Like anything, I don't get, I don't give up. But my, like an hour on a boss fight, like and like I don't know, I keep accidentally walking into the middle beam and the rolling nades when I didn't mean to, and I don't know. I'm definitely not at the peak of my game, but goodness, like this, just like you look away for 10 seconds and you can't see way all the way over there, and then you get showered with plasma. Johnson, I'm on it. Hang tight, ma'am. Not until that brute is dead. And Johnson has all the, has the timing of a, well, whatever type of person can't dance. He's got that kind of timing. He's just shooting... Shooting blanks. It's like no matter how, like I try to lead him. Oh, there we go. Secondary generators charging. All systems are. No one can definitely accuse this fight of being easy. If you think this fight on legendary is easy, then you need to. I'm done. I'm done. I'm just walking away now. If you want to nade spam the joint, go for it. Suck on them apples. Call him Granny Smith. You turd. Power generation phase complete. The installation is ready to fire. Starting final countdown. Come on, Arbiter. Kick that guy in there. And may I say, reclaimers, it has been a pleasure to serve you both.
While his shield is down. Johnson, you have the timing of. I I don't even I don't even know what comparison to make it to. It's like I am out of the picture. The shield's down. It's ridiculous. Well, if you would try to, you know, like the military, they try to coordinate their efforts, Mr. Sergeant Johnson. They try to coordinate their efforts, and that way, you can attack them at the same time. Super cool, super fun. It's called teamwork. You should try it sometime. Instead of lowering his shield when I'm nowhere near him. That would be so super fantastic. Instead of just yelling at me to get him while your shield's down. Never mind, you're not even on the same level. Okay, that was it. An hour and 14 minutes on one boss battle. What's that? A beacon. What's it doing? Communicating at superluminal speeds with the frequency of... Communicating with what? The other installations. Show me. Failsafe protocol. In the event of unexpected shutdown, the entire system will move to standby status. All remaining platforms are now ready for remote activation. Remote activation? From here? 
Don't be ridiculous. Listen, Tinkerbell, don't make me... Then where? Where would someone go to activate the other rings? Why the Ark, of course. And where, Oracle, is that? We've got a new contact. Unknown classification. It isn't one of ours. Take it out. This is Spartan 117. Anyone hear me? Over. Isolate that signal. Master Chief, you mind telling me what you're doing on that ship? Sir, finishing this fight. Wow, okay. So, getting some achievements. Okay. Spartan points, etc. That was crazy. That was... an hour, over an hour, just to beat Tartarus. I've been kind of discussing what I've been doing with some of my other gamer friends and just people, acquaintances, really. Um, and I don't know if they're a good benchmark, but they were telling me that, like, I would get, I, I've been getting frustrated with how long some of these levels are taking, and then I find out that over three hours is, like, their standard playthrough for Legendary, and that really only happened once. So... I don't know where I stack up against other people, to be honest, because my major league gaming days, you know, you're working as a freelance contractor, so you're not really employed, but they kept bringing me back. I think it was 2000 and it was 06 Meadowlands all the way through 2013, where I actually, I was on StarCraft at the time, did everything from graphics to directing to... A lot of good memories, most of them around Halo. And Halo 3... I first got my hands on Halo 3... I believe it was uh, MLG Orlando. And it was like a few weeks before the game came out. So... Anywho, I'll talk more about that later when we go through Halo 3 on Legendary. Which... I'm told is not quite as frustrating as some of the parts of Halo 2 on Legendary. And I'll have a bunch of different shorts coming out uh, for the next month or so. You won't see any Halo 3 content for a while. And then I'll probably take less time going through Reach. Because really by the time in my personal gaming history that I got to Halo Reach... You could kind of tell the pro scene was dying down. MLG was diversifying into other games like StarCraft II. And I could not really get into Call of Duty ever. Not on a pro level. I think with a lot of those, a lot of those organizations like Optic and FaZe did were amazing. 
and I think like things like Hundred Thieves and other th other things have have definitely expanded on what everyone thought the monetization model would be for competitive gaming. But really, by the time you get to Halo Reach, a lot of the old Halo buds had kind of fallen off the map. Halo One, you know, you had a lot of friends who you were gaming almost every weekend with setting up four massive CRT TVs, getting LAN equipment from Best Buy and feeling a little superior because you knew more than the than the employee. But really by the time Halo Reach ran around, you could kind of tell Bungie had made no secret that they were tired of Halo. They had put a decade plus into these games by that time. And the Halo scene appears to have changed as well. I don't know how Infinite stacks up. I ended up buying the Infinite campaign on the Steam sale, so I'm going to skip straight from Halo 4 to, hey, to Halo Infinite. 5 seems to be the most disliked of all of them, while still liked for some of the things that it did right. Bungie moved on, of course, to Destiny and Destiny 2, and then 343 took over. I was really surprised. I actually went to a Halo Major tournament in my city. I wasn't even really interested at, at the, in the competitive aspect, really. I just wanted to see a lot of old friends, and I did. And they actually took me behind the scenes and showed me kind of how things had evolved and the equipment that they're using, the precision, the direction the capabilities they have for broadcast for things like the Halo Championship Series. Absolutely incredible. And really amazing to see, you know, those guys and women and people in general who stuck with it, who went either to work directly for the publishers themselves or to start whole new companies. Because as you know, MLG sold to Activision. I'm not sure what year that was, but... I remember going, wow, like by that time I was out of it. And again, I was only ever really a contractor, so you're not an employee by any means, but I was involved. And seeing them do that and then not knowing what it what happened after, which I probably shouldn't speak on even though I have knowledge, to see the same people either forming companies together or just going into Microsoft, into Epic Games, into all these various organizations. Because for, for a couple of years, I was involved in the Gears of War streams as the director, and that was a lot of fun. That wasn't a game I played a lot, but I actually ended up playing it more because of witnessing that competitive tournament play and just the passion that all those Gears of War players had and that's something that's always been inspiring to me about competitive gaming. A lot of these people dedicate tons of time and a lot of people in society at large sees that as a waste of time. I think it's up to you whether it is or not. It's tough. It's, you know, it's, it's not an easy scene on any side of it, whether you're working on the broadcast, whether you're competing, None of it is easy. I think there's a lot of seasonality to it. I think that macroeconomics affect gaming and competitive gaming more than people would like to think about. I see it almost the same type of demographics as competitive skateboarding, that type of thing, like street league skateboarding. Not entirely sure where I was going with that, but those were some just general thoughts on my mind about where the Halo scene started, where it went, and where it is now. I, I see people out there trying to foster that sense of community that largely faded away. It seems like the magic of Halo definitely slowed down while I was away because I basically I didn't play four I didn't play five I didn't really play infinite and then I got the master chief collection and I however halo 4 shakes out because again I'm going to be playing it fresh 
Halo 1, 2, 3, and Reach, a lot of fun. But I think there's maybe a comparison you can draw between gaming franchises and the Marvel Cinematic Universe, right? Because we all know the MCU peaked after, after Endgame. We had Infinity War, we had Endgame, and then we got largely uneven quality... Shang-Chi was amazing. Guardians 3 was amazing <laughs> after bringing back James Gunn after he got canceled. Uh, however, the point is that people get a fatigue, right? They want to support their property. They want to watch TV shows based on their video game property. They want to keep playing. And developers have experimented with different ways to keep it fresh, right? They've tried skins, they've tried all these different things. I don't even know what I'm looking at when I look at Fortnite. I've never played Fortnite, obviously, but I look at that and I, I don't understand it at all. And maybe this is just some of me aging out of some of those new trends, but I, I don't get it. I think that microtransactions are a great justification to milk more money out of people which I'm not okay with. I feel privileged to grow up in the period that I did because when I started, it was Dark Forces, it was Quake, it was Unreal Tournament. It was a lot of these games made by smaller studios who have gotten very big, and some of them have very much lost their way. And the market punishes them. And honestly, I really like that when the market punishes AAA title development that shouldn't be rewarded, right? Because again, like I was saying before, you can have art, you can have amazing, talented people working on an absolutely dog's breath of a game. A game in and of itself has to be a fun experience. And to some degree, I, I think a lot of people have lost sight of that. Why do they game? Well, if you're not having fun, there's something very, very wrong. And I say that fully understanding that I just spent over an hour on a boss fight. That wasn't super fun, but I also am someone who likes to finish what I start. And I'm not going to give up just because things got difficult for a minute. Most of the game was very fun. I was able to crack some jokes, tell some stories, make a few videos here and there, and that's all that's all I wanted from the experience. I don't particularly care how many views this gets. By now, I'm sure a lot of people have probably tuned out of this little rant. Again, these are all unscripted. I'm just going. And I think part of why I started this YouTube channel is I've got some opinions. I don't expect everyone to agree with them. In fact, I'd love it if there were some disagreements and perspectives maybe from different gamers who do understand, you know, what Fortnite is and do understand maybe what Destiny 1 and 2 is because Bungie went in a whole different direction. I never really bothered to get into Destiny. I really don't like anything that is software as a service gaming as a service is horrible i think it's a great way to turn people into subscriptions and monetization again i'm not against monetization however i'm very much against and this is a larger trend where you own nothing the minute you stop subscribing you don't own it doesn't matter how many hours you spend on it, you don't own it. Which is not something I think is good, because my experience of gaming growing up, you had physical media, you bought the game, and that's it. If, you, if a gaming company can't make money off of that model, something is very wrong. And... I enjoyed seeing things like art made based on a game. I think, you know, we have Ryan Wyatt at YouTube Gaming to thank for a lot of these YouTube changes that are very much creator friendly, gaming friendly. 
there was huge contentious problems about copyrights and esports used to be kind of looked at as a problem and not an additional way to engage with the audience that loves the game wants to compete it was looked at as a problem which is crazy to say when you have things like twitch where people can literally earn a living broadcasting every day playing their favorite game now imagine that the gaming company is like that game is ours we're taking all your money and that's kind of how it used to be mlg was not well regarded by bungie for quite a while uh thanks to say that change with halo 3 i believe at orlando a few of the developers came out i still have a signed case of halo 3 or maybe it was well no it was halo 3 because i got a case that i had brought and i had i had a few of the developers sign it i don't remember which ones were there but it was really cool to see Bungie kind of embrace MLG and embrace competitive gaming instead of looking at it like, hmm. And it's been fun to see how the trends have changed. I know a few people from the MLG days who are now like big time streamers, they're, you know, commentators, personalities, and they're making a living doing it. It's really exciting to watch them be successful. So again, I don't know where I was really going with that. I just had a few thoughts on gaming as a service. I remember one time I had a friend who told me how much money he'd spent on skins and things and I was like, oh my god, like are you kidding me? Like how can you spend that much money on a game and not realize it? And again, like I have no problem spending money on things like derivative works such as the Eminence, Symf Eminence Symphony Orchestra putting out some things based on World of Warcraft or Blizzard games. And I'm not even a WoW fan, and I still bought one of their physical media sets from way back when just because it was, it was beautiful music. And I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about developers trying to eke every last dollar out of their players. And again... That's kind of where the market comes in, and if it works, then people are clearly okay with it. If it doesn't, you know, maybe they need to look at something like Helldivers 2 and understand that when a game is good, the passionate fans will promote it. You don't need to beg, you don't need to do anything other than make a good game. Make something fun. Make something that people can bond with and form a sense of community. Community has always been big with gamers, especially when things change. You know, after Halo 1, Halo 2, you had Xbox Live, and then from every game forward. Now, not always a positive community, mind you, you know. I mean, you'd be lying if you said it was all positive, but people enjoy that. They enjoy that sense of community that a game can bring. And I hope that developers are still committed to those kinds of games. Seems like they're few and far between, but uh, I'm rambling, so I'm just going to go ahead and wrap it up. I hope you understand that whatever you're doing here, whatever whatever reason you're still watching, um, I'm always going to keep it. I'm always going to keep it a buck with you. I'm always going to keep it 100. If I don't like something, I'll say I don't like it. If I do, I will. And I try to skew to be positive, but not at the expense of reality. So hopefully you've enjoyed watching all of these, this kind of revisitation of mine through the Halo series. We're going to do three. We're going to do Reach. And it really, I loved Reach. I thought that was such a great game. Surprising, really. I didn't know what to expect. But, and then we're going to go through Halo 4. Which, again, I'm going to give my honest thoughts on that. And try to chop up some good shorts from that. So, as soon as you're seeing this video, everything from this point forward is going to be shorts that I cut from Halo 2. So, if these... if 
if these videos are too long for you, the shorts are coming, and hopefully you all enjoy them. Have a good night, or day, whatever it is.